Good morning, everybody. Jim Hoffman here. I am pastor at St. John's United Methodist Church in Midtown, Kansas City. It is 1144 uh, Central Time here in um, our lovely home, and it is time for our daily devotion. So I am uh, the host on our St. John's Facebook page, and I want to invite you to come and join me as we take a moment to pause in the middle of the day to spend in devotion with one another towards God. As you uh, find our Facebook page, if you want to leave a quick comment and say hello, that would be great. I would appreciate you doing that. I'm going to say good morning to a few folks. I will announce our scripture for today, things like that, just so that we can get prepared and settle in. And here in a couple minutes, we'll have our devotion time. My Uncle Bill is watching this morning. Good morning. Good morning, Susan. Glad you are here as well. Got a notification I need to get rid of on my phone. <laughs> I want to say thank you to Allie for stepping in yesterday. I was on a meeting, a Zoom meeting, uh, that went until about 12.15 or so. I was hoping it was going to get over earlier, but uh, once I got the agenda uh, yesterday morning, it became obvious that uh, I needed her help, and she was very kind enough to say yes, so I always appreciate uh, Allie's willingness to also host this. So thank you very much, Allie. Good morning, Shirley. Glad you are here today. It's a beautiful Tuesday here, kind of crisp. Most of us in the Midwest are having a little bit of a uh, cool streak going on, but it's nice. It's beautiful here, sunny. Hopefully we get some rain soon though. We've had a little bit, but we need a little bit more. My flowers and the weeds, you know, the weeds, they, they like rain too. I think, I think weeds can grow without rain. It's the flowers that need them the most. <laughs> We're going to be reading out of Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16, by the way. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. This is where Jesus, uh, in his Sermon on the Mount, talks about uh, what it means for us to be salt and light. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 to 16. If you watch this later today, don't forget, say hello, leave a comment. Would appreciate you doing that. And in the Bible, we're reading out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 13 through 16. Here is our opening prayer. O God, by your spoken word, you created everything that is. By your incarnate word, you redeemed us. By your comforting word, you are with us still. So prepare us now to hear your word to us this day. Amen. Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16 says, You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. People do not light a lamp and put it under the bushel basket, Rather, they put it on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, your light shines before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Our devotion writer today is William G. Heck, and William is from North Carolina. His focus verse is verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. And here is William's uh, devotion that he offers for us to consider and uh, meditate on today. One of my favorite meals is pinto beans cooked with diced onions, sweet pepper, tomato, garlic, and salt. Although we cannot see salt in our food, it is crucial. 
We always know whether or not it is present. Too much can make a dish inedible, and too little leaves it tasting bland. Just the right amount ensures a tasty meal. Salt is important in our faith as well. Jesus tells us to be salt of the earth. I think this means we should show Jesus' love to the world in such a way that we bring forth its full flavor. Part of our Christian responsibility is not only to make ourselves pleasing to God, but also to relate to others in a way that helps them become pleasing to God. What a big challenge Jesus has set before us. Being salt to the world is both humbling and empowering. We are humbled because being salt requires us to direct our attention toward others. And we are empowered because we trust the Spirit and share Jesus' ministry as we strive to make the world pleasing to God. Thought for the day is, I please God when I relate to others with love. And that's a, a fascinating kind of thing to think about. Uh, honestly, uh, I gave up the salt shaker 30 plus years ago. I very rarely ever add uh, salt to anything. I might add some pepper to a few things, but I, I, I hardly ever pick up a salt shaker and add it to anything. Most all the food uh, that we consume already for me has enough salt in it. Now others aren't, you know, may, may like more salt on their food. And that's fine. That's totally up to them. Um, it's just something that I have made a conscious choice to do. Um, you know, blood pressure and things like that. Just to, just to kind of watch it. So I watch how much salt I use. And in some ways, if you think about it, we we might do that with uh, our own presence, right? We reserve maybe some of uh, what it means for us to be Christian in the world around us. We might hide it a little bit. We might not use it uh, in the way that God intends us to use our faith, um, be bold. You know, salt is intended to influence. It influences the taste of the other things that are present in whatever uh, dish is made or whatever it's put upon. It influences, right? And we're supposed to be influencers as well. And we're supposed to be influencers in particular for Jesus' presence in today's world. Which means that we're supposed to carry around these things of Christ. We're supposed to be like Christ. As salt is salt, we're supposed to be like Jesus. But maybe the hardest reason why we can't be salt in the world is because we're missing the ways in which we are supposed to be like Jesus himself. And the big challenge is for us to become faithful disciples who follow him in the ways in which we are, are called to, particularly in the means of loving one another, loving our enemies, and being willing to be self-giving in that love as well. It's hard for us to learn. It's hard for us to do. It is easier for us to practice hatred and violence and, and those kinds of things than it is for us to practice love. And yet when you, when you look those words up, which I have done recently, when you look up words are like hatred, violence, battle, all of those kinds of things, uh, they don't, um, th their use in the Bible does not outnumber the number of times that we are called to love. Love is a greater presence in scriptures than even violence and harm. Uh, love is to have greater influence uh, through our scriptures and in our lives. So I think in many ways, if we want to truly be the salt that God has called us to be, then we have to figure out how to be loving in the way that Jesus was and the way God wants us to be as well. So think about that for yourself today. Do you, number one, want to be the salt that God has called you to be? And do you, number two, want to learn to love as God has called us to love? That's a hard thing for us to journey towards. It means that we've got to put some things aside and let God do some work within us. But it's a noble journey. It's a journey that will change the world. And I think in many ways, it's a journey that will, at the end of our lives, uh, help us to hear the words that we desire, which is, well done, thou good and faithful servant. 
So let's take a moment to pause and pray that God might lead us. So, O oh Lord, we ask that you guide us to be salt in the world as we show your love to others. We pray as Jesus taught us to pray, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread, forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone who sinned against us, and lead us not into temptation. Amen. Thank you, friends, for being here today. I appreciate all of you. I am so glad that you have made it to our devotion time today. Again, for those of you that watch this later on, don't forget, take a moment to leave a quick comment. Let me know that you stopped by as well. I'll be with you tomorrow for our devotion time, so come and join me as well. Uh, I've been listening to Father Mike uh, Schmitz, who does a, daily, um, does a daily podcast on a year in the Bible. And one of the things that he always closes them out with is, I am praying for you. I want to invite you to pray for me. And I want to invite you to pray for one another as well. And I think that's a great way for us to end. I'm going to try to repeat that as often as I can remember to do so. But I want to let you know that I'm praying for you today. I hope you'll take a moment to pray for me, and I invite you to pray for one another as well. God's peace and grace be upon you. I'll look forward to being with you tomorrow. Thanks, friends.